seen nothing like this. That's just the truth. The 2016 rise, race is going to go down as one for the history books, the wildest, the most memorable, anything you want to call it, and a lot of it negative. Here's a look back at the highs and lows of this race that's certainly like no other. I'm a candidate for president. I am proud to announce I am running for president. I'm a candidate for president of, of the United, United States. States. Donald Trump just announced he is running for president. They're bringing drugs. They're bringing crime. They're rapists. We all might look back and say we remember <laughs> where we were when it happened. We will build a wall. And you know who's going to pay for the wall? Mexico. They're going to pay for it. Donald J. Trump is calling for a total and complete shutdown of Muslims entering the United States. I could stand in the middle of Fifth Avenue and shoot somebody and I wouldn't lose any voters, okay? The Justice Department asked to open an investigation into Hillary Clinton's emails on her private server. I, I'm, I'm, I, you know, I don't, I have no idea. That's why we turned it over. We were in charge of it. You were the official charge. Did you like this one? What, like with a cloth or something? Before there was something called Obamacare, there was something called Hillary Care. I take a back seat to no one in taking on income inequality. The Republicans kicked off their first presidential debate. You've called women you don't like fat pigs, dogs, slobs. Only yes, Rosie several. O'Donnell. You could see there was blood coming out of her eyes, uh, blood coming out of her wherever. I think women all over this country heard very clearly what Mr. Trump said. I think she's got a beautiful face and I think she's a beautiful woman. You're never going to be president of the United States tough, by insulting yeah. your way to well, the Let's presidency. see, I'm at 42 and you're at 3, so Doesn't so matter. far I'm doing better. That Have you seen his hands? They're like this. And you know what they say about men with small hands? He referred to my hands. If they're small, something else must be small. I guarantee you there's no problem. The scene of the first Democratic presidential debate. Just for the record, are you a progressive or are you a moderate? I'm a progressive. But I'm a progressive who likes to get things done. The American people are sick and tired of hearing about your damn emails. Thank you. Me too. Me too. <laughs> he is becoming ISIS's best recruiter. I am not a natural politician, in case you haven't noticed, like my husband or President Obama. Dr. Ben Carson has risen to national frontrunner status. A big night for Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton. Senator Ted Cruz dealt a blow to Donald Trump. Donald, you're a sniveling coward and leave Heidi the hell alone. He's a war hero because he was captured. I like people that weren't captured, okay? Many people know the story when I was 14 and I tried to stab someone. He went after a friend and he lunged, but lo and behold, it hit the belt. If fighting for women's health care and paid family leave and equal pay is playing the woman card, then deal me in. Hillary Clinton is the presumptive Democratic nominee. We are going to make America great again, but we're going to do it the old-fashioned way. Donald Trump is the presumptive Republican nominee. The next Vice President of the United States, Governor Mike Pence. The next Vice President, my friend, Senator Jim Kane. A lot of excitement as the RNC kicks off. <laughs> Hillary Clinton must become the next president. Have you even read the United States Constitution? I will gladly lend you my copy. You work hard for what you want in life. That you work hard for what you want in life. That your word is your bond, that you do what you say you're going to do. That your word is your bond. And you do what you say. Who takes the fall for cribbing Michelle Obama's speech in 2008? Uh, to think that she would be cribbing Michelle Obama's words is, is crazy. Our motto is, when they go low, we go high. She is still the best darn change maker I have ever known. There has never been a man or a woman, not me, not Bill, nobody, more qualified than Hillary Clinton. When you have my father in your corner, you will never again have to worry about being let down. I am with you. I will be a president for Democrats, Republicans. I will fight for you, and I will win for you. For all Americans together.
Donald Trump simply does not have the temperament. If she gets to pick her judges, nothing you can do, folks. You could put half of Trump supporters into what I call the basket of deplorables. She calls the patriotic Americans deplorable and irredeemable. Hillary Clinton, we've just learned in the last hour, diagnosed with pneumonia. It appears that the candidate fainted. Do you think Hillary would be able to stand up here for an hour and do this? Why all the furtiveness? Why the concealment? I thought that uh, there wasn't really any reason to make a big fuss about it. Trump's surprise trip to Mexico today. We did discuss the wall. We didn't discuss payment of the wall. Uh, that'll be for a later date. Clinton and Trump one-on-one. -on -one. People are saying this could be the most consequential debate in modern political history. I have much better judgment than she does. There's no question about that. I also have a much better temperament than she has. I think Donald just criticized me for preparing for this debate. And yes, I did. He called this woman Miss Piggy. Then he called her Miss Housekeeping because she was Latina. Where did you find her? Her name Where is did Alicia you find Machado. One down, two to go. Look, what do you have to lose? You're living in poverty. Your schools are no good. You have no jobs. What the hell do you have to lose? Donald Trump's closing argument is what do you have to lose? The answer is everything. Donald Trump caught on tape in his own words, vulgar words. And when you're a star, they let you do it. You can do anything. Whatever you want. Grab him by the pussy. I'm very embarrassed by it. I hate it. But it's locker room talk. He has said that the video doesn't represent who he is. I think it's clear to anyone who heard it that it represents exactly who he is. A ninth woman now has stepped forward accusing Trump of sexual assault. These vicious claims about me of inappropriate conduct with women are totally and absolutely false. It's just awfully good that someone with the temperament of Donald Trump is not in charge of the law in our country. Because you'd be in jail. The press has created a rigged system and poisoned the minds of the voters. Donald Trump's already talking about how the game's rigged. That means he's losing. Are you saying you're not prepared now to come What I'm to that saying principle? is that I will tell you at the time, I'll keep you in suspense. Every time Donald thinks things are not going in his direction, he claims whatever it is is rigged against him. News from the FBI, new information pertinent to the Hillary Clinton server investigation. I am sure they will reach the same conclusion. There is no case here. The FBI Director James Comey weighing in yet again, saying in so many words the investigation is over. You can't review 650,000 new emails in eight days. We will make America great again. Thank you very much, everybody. I really believe America's best days are still ahead of us. How did we fit all of that into just a year and a half? There were moments that I'd forgotten. Bobby Jindal's announcement I had forgotten. Um, some of the Carly Fiorina. I mean, it's amazing what has happened over just the past year and a half with all of that. I am overwhelmed by the negativity. These moments, just bad thing after bad thing. The country, it's basically like this election has been a sledgehammer that's just bashing at the foundations of it. I want to thank Elizabeth Stewart, uh, one of our best here on New Day, for putting away. I think you could have a little bit more of us in there. That's just <laughs> me. Constructive criticism for the Wait, next piece. History is written. Chris <laughs> people have played a prominent role in Just that, saying, you know, it. just saying. No, it was a great <laughs> job. Uh, and there's no question that it's going to go down in the books of history. Why and how it's seen I think is going to be up for debate. I have an answer for you right now. Let's bring in our guest. We want to bring in Julian Zelizer. He is the Princeton University historian and professor and author of The Fierce Urgency of Now. Professor, thanks so much for being here. Thank you. As a historian, what jumps out at you when you watch that mashup of the past year and a half? Well, it's difficult to watch. It's obviously all the polarization in American politics, all the dislike of one side toward the other comes right out in that short clip. And some of it is also the superficiality of a lot of the day. We've had emotional elections like 1968 where people are fighting over issues like Vietnam. You watch these clips, there's almost no issue. It's about the back and forth over character and insults. But then why does it seem um, 
intense? Is it just the recency effect that we haven't seen anything like it, you know, lately? Is that why it seems so extreme? No, it comes out of the electorate. I think certainly there are parts of the Republican electorate who uh, like Donald Trump, who reflect his views, and some of the anger and vitriol that you see on the campaign at the top of the ticket come from changes that have happened within the Republican Party. Uh, so I don't think this goes away with Donald Trump. I don't think it was invented with Donald Trump. These are changes that have been going on in the electorate that are now front and center. But, you know, we debate this all the time. Do you think that this race is the most polarized partisan ever? No, I don't. I, I think we've certainly had polarized uh, uh, campaigns before. As I said, in 1968, people were fighting on the streets in Chicago at the Democratic Convention over issues like Vietnam. In 2004, people don't remember some of the animosity over George W. Bush and the war in Iraq. Campaigns are emotional. Uh, so it's more about the content of this campaign and some of the particulars of how certainly the Republican ticket has conducted the campaign. Oh, here's a good one. What does history suggest about what it will take to heal, to have something positive come out of this? Uh, there, there's a lot of evidence we won't heal. Uh, so because That's not the answer I was looking for. Right, at. but because the polarization comes out of the electorate, uh, rather than just from Donald Trump, for example, it will continue. So in 1964, when Barry Goldwater runs far to the right, he loses in a landslide election, that conservatism doesn't go away in the Republican Party. It's just remade through Ronald Reagan about a decade later in a more polished version. So I'm not sure we will heal these divisions. I think they're very real and very deep-rooted. A lot of people do think that the Republican Party, at least, comes out of this election looking different, um, having a different sort of composition. Do you agree with that? That could. I think clearly what he's been able to do is build a blue-collar coalition within the Republican Party that's different than the business, financial uh, kind of temperament of the GOP before. Uh, whether the policies change, we don't know, but he's appealed to different groups. He's also brought into the mainstream associations with arguments that before were on the fringes about immigration, about uh, the Islamic world and community, and I think that will also have an effect on the Republican Party as they try to broaden their reach. So when our littles are studying some 15 years or now, you know, for their advanced degrees, uh, what do you think they will be taught about what this election meant? Well, the number one thing might be very obvious that we're not talking about. The first female president in the United States might be on the cusp of being elected. And if that happens, I think even with all this heat and all this anger, which won't go away, that will be the first story that we talk about, just as we did in 2008. And that's very significant, and it's a major development in the middle of what's been a chaotic and ugly campaign. If she wins. So if Trump wins, what do you think this will be most remembered for generations from now? Well, it will be about the change of the Republican Party. We'll look and say, what happened to the party of Ronald Reagan, and how did it become the party of Donald Trump? How did these new voters, how did these new arguments move front and center? And how did some of the older Republicans, the business Republicans, the national security Republicans, lose their hold on this party? Professor Zelizer, thanks so much. Great to have you here on New Day. Thank you. We're following a lot of news this morning, so let's get right to it. It's a rigged system, and she's protected. Hillary Clinton cleared by the FBI once again. We're glad that this matter is resolved. It's up to the American people to deliver justice at the ballot box. There's a lot of anger in this election, but anger is not a plan. Just think about what we can accomplish in the first 100 days of a Trump administration. It all comes down to you, my friends. Our progress is on the line. This is New Day with Chris Cuomo and Allison Camerata. All right, good morning. Welcome to your new day. Up first, Clinton gets a late break. FBI Director Comey coming out and saying, we looked at the emails, there's nothing there. There will be no indictment of Hillary Clinton with respect to emails. What does Clinton say? Surprisingly, almost nothing. She wants to move past this with the big decision just tomorrow. Donald Trump still says the system is rigged and he's asking the American people to, quote, deliver justice at the polls. Both candidates launching battleground blitzes in this final day of campaigning. Just one more day until Election Day. And we have it all covered for you. So let's begin with CNN Justice correspondent Pamela Brown. She is live in Washington. What's the latest, Pamela? 
Well, Allison, we have learned FBI agents worked around the clock to review the thousands of newly surfaced emails, and key to this effort was technology that had been refined from its previous use for the initial Clinton private server investigation. And it turns out most of the emails involving Hillary Clinton were personal or duplicate emails that had already been reviewed by the FBI. Director Comey was briefed on the findings yesterday and made the decision he would not change his July recommendation of no charges against Clinton. The FBI has been under intense pressure since Director Comey sent that letter to Congress a week and a half ago saying new emails had surfaced relevant to the private server investigation. The probe is considered over for now when it comes to Hillary Clinton. Now as for the others who were part of the probe including Huma Abedin, the FBI is still working on remaining aspects of the review including determining how the emails ended up on her estranged husband's laptop in the first place. Abedin's attorneys as we know have said she doesn't know why these emails were there because she this wasn't a computer she used this morning though questions continue to surround director comey including why he made the decision to alert congress with less than two weeks until the election before understanding the substance of these emails no matter who wins the election tomorrow you can bet comey will be in a tough spot back to you no question about that pamela brown thank you very much so the clinton campaign breathing a little easier after the fbi director's letter to congress yesterday but is it too little too late on this issue cnn's phil mattingly joins us now phil well chris one of the big questions is what is the clinton campaign going to do with this good news right just a couple days before the election the answer nothing at all and there's a good reason why the clinton campaign has maintained throughout they win their numbers go up when they're talking about donald trump and so even though clinton held two rallies yesterday one in new hampshire one in cleveland ohio after the letter was sent no mention at all of the letter instead hillary clinton talking about what she brings to the table take a listen i love our country and i believe in our people and I will never, ever quit on you, no matter what. And guys also taking a number of swipes at Donald Trump. Today, the last major day, at least scheduled so far for Clinton on the campaign trail. And when you take a look at where she's going, you get a sense of where the Clinton campaign currently stands. A first trip to Michigan. She's been there a couple times. The uh, multiple people, uh, multiple of her surrogates have also gone there. And that's a big story because that is a traditionally blue battleground state, but also a late night rally tonight in Raleigh, North Carolina. A true toss up that if the Clinton campaign can secure, they'll be in pretty good shape. But the headline of the night, the primetime event, Pennsylvania, a Philadelphia rally outside Independence Hall, First Lady Michelle Obama, President Barack Obama, and two Pretty big guess, I think you could say. Bruce Springsteen, John Bon Jovi, that is the image the Clinton campaign wants to leave voters with as they head to the polls. Allison? So, born to run, we're going to hear, maybe, about the applies Glory to both. Days. Living on a prayer. Just a few we'll potential <laughs> options. Okay. Thanks, Phil. We'll see what happens. Trump, meanwhile, is again saying the system is rigged and that the FBI's decision not to prosecute Clinton is proof of that. So he now wants voters, in his words, to quote, deliver justice at the ballot box. CNN's Sunlin Sarfati joins us now with more. What does that mean, Sunlin? Well, Allison, Donald Trump is sure not letting go of this line of attack that he thinks Hillary Clinton is guilty of federal crimes. At his rallies last night, he continued to bring up that she has been the subject of an FBI investigation, but notably, very notably, leaving out that the FBI review is now over and that she has been, in essence, cleared of any wrongdoing. And the Trump campaign, Trump is really casting doubt on the FBI director's conclusions. And keep in mind, this is only about a week since he praised the FBI director for announcing the review of the emails. Here's Trump last night in Michigan. You can't review 650,000 new emails in eight days. You can't do it, folks. Hillary Clinton is guilty. She knows it. The FBI knows it. The people know it. And now it's up to the American people to deliver justice at the ballot box. And Trump today has another flurry of campaign events. He's trying to find the pieces he needs to put 270 electoral votes together. He's campaigning in the must-win states of Florida and North Carolina. Then it's on to Pennsylvania, New Hampshire, and Michigan. His last rally tonight, a late-night rally in Michigan, that's a late-in-the-game ad and a new focus by the Trump campaign. This is a state that has not gotten Republicans since 1988. As Clinton's there is trying to play some defense, the Trump campaign clearly sensing opportunity, Chris, to potentially flip this state. All right, Sullen, thank you very much. Let's bring in Wisconsin Congressman Sean Duffy. He supports Donald Trump. Always a pleasure, Congressman. 
Hey, Chris, thanks for having me back on. Absolutely. So how do you feel about your party's nominee saying that Jim Comey is corrupt uh, and that the FBI knows that Hillary Clinton is guilty but not saying it and that the FBI essentially is lying about having reviewed uh, the emails on Anthony Weiner's laptop? How do you feel about that? Well, first of all, I, I, I don't focus on what Donald Trump says or does. Uh, if we're talking about emails, uh, we're talking about Hillary Clinton and the corruption of her having uh, private and secure emails on her private server and the fact that she was extremely careless with top secret information. I mean, that's the conversation that I think so many Americans are thinking about as this new letter came out from Jim Comey. Um, I think Donald Trump frustrated, though, Chris. Um, you know, I, I think he makes a good point that the FBI reviewed 650,000 emails uh, in nine days is pretty remarkable. Uh, but from my perspective, I take the FBI at their word. I think they're trying to do the best job that they can. And I think only later on, whether it is through the FBI having a hearing with Congress or if it comes through leaks through FBI agents, are we going to find out what information the FBI had and will we be able to then judge Director Comey and uh, the decisions that he's made during this campaign? Congressman, the reason I would suspect that you take the FBI at their word is because of two things. One, you're being a responsible uh, public official, and two, you don't have any proof otherwise. You are backing a man for president who does not act on those bases. He'll say that the FBI is essentially lying. He has no proof, and he will spread that doubt about one of these critical institutions of our democracy for his own political gain and you say you don't focus on what donald trump says and does don't you have to if you want him to be president hey hey chris if i'm going to be a little surly with you this morning i would say hey chris you're supporting someone um but i won't go that far or you just did uh, where'd you learn that from trump? someone i know <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't work you're, that way you're supporting you're supporting someone uh, who actually took top secret information and put it on a private server. You're supporting someone who destroyed 33,000 emails with a bleach bit and then smashed her phones. And the FBI said she was extremely careless. So to look at Donald Trump and say, Mr. Trump, yeah, he's had some issues with the FBI. That's maybe one offense. But comparing that to what Hillary Clinton did with regard to top secret information, there is absolutely no comparison between those two. And so if Americans are evaluating Donald Trump in regard to emails and the FBI and Hillary Clinton, hands down, Donald but, Trump will win. But how is that the comparison? In that analysis. How is the comparison? And I'm going to assume, I'm going to assume for the sake of our friendship that you're being rhetorical when you're calling yes. me out as I being am, for am. Clinton. Yeah, um, I am. I but that's okay. You just gave food to all the trumpets all morning. I'll have to hear it now. I hope you feel good about yourself, Doug. <laughs> I'm but, kidding. Look, there's no question yeah. that the email thing was wrong. It was unusual for Comey to say it extremely careless. The FBI doesn't usually talk that way, but certainly he echoed the way a lot of people feel. I'm not, uh, I'm not asking about that. I'm saying Comey says there's no crime. Your candidate for president, the nominee of your party, says, yes, there is. He's lying. There's a crime. Comey says, we looked at the new emails. I can't advance the case. Your, your nominee says, he's lying. They didn't really look at all those emails. Is that responsible behavior from someone who would be president of the United States? So, first off, Chris, I think prosecutors, and I was a prosecutor for 10 years, I know you're a lawyer, mm -hmm. I look at Trey Gowdy and Trey Gowdy's comments sure. in regard to the hearing, um, there is some disagreement about whether the FBI could actually prosecute um, Hillary Clinton for having these top secret uh, emails on a private server. Um, no doubt about it. And, and, and in fact, she came to the Congress and said that she didn't send or receive classified mm -hmm. uh, information. But then Director Comey came in and said, no, no, actually she did. She had classified information on her server. She sent and received it from that server. And therefore, she lied to Congress as well. So I don't buy the idea that she couldn't be prosecuted. I will see the point that the FBI chose not to prosecute her. Um, and that doesn't mean she hasn't committed a crime or committed bad acts and endangered American national security. Um, those things all happened. Um, now, I think Donald Trump is frustrated, and I think a lot of Americans are frustrated with how this investigation happened. Think back to Bill Clinton meeting on a tarmac in Arizona with Loretta Lynch. Mm -hmm. um, that stuff just doesn't happen in a legitimate um, system. And I think there's a lot of people who are scratching their heads this morning saying, 
can't, why is, why are the Clintons treated differently in these investigations? Why do their, you know, why does the spouse of a target get to meet with the, the, the head of the Department of Justice? And I think there's, the, 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 the DOJ and the FBI and the Clintons have brought a lot of the scrutiny on themselves. I don't, I don't, um, Disregard your point, Chris. That you know uh, that, that Donald Trump has been a little bit aggressive in his pushback on the FBI. He has, but make no mistake, he's channeling a lot of frustration and anger that is that is uh, seething within a lot of Americans. That there's one standard for all of America, and there's a different standard for the Clintons, and they don't like it. We in America think that we all should follow the same rules. Doesn't matter how wealthy you are or how powerful you are. We all get treated equally and fairly under the law. You know, old lady justice with her blindfold on and her scales of justice. That's our vision of American uh, law, and we don't feel like a lot of Americans don't feel like that's been the case with regard to Hillary Clinton. Well, it's a good